I've seen a lot of folks make comments about Gyroline and wanted to convince myself how good that system actually is, having bought it. So here's what I'm going to do. Basically going to assume that this is the left and the right side of the car and just do a whole bunch of different types of measurements and see how repeatable they are. And then we're going to move to a car. For the first round of this, let's just see if it repeats. We're going to lock this in place effectively against an immovable bar and say this is the right rear followed by the left rear followed by the right rear. That better show zero, otherwise something's really off. And I'm gonna do this about 10 times and see if I get anything other than zero. Just did about eight runs and never got anything except for zero toe. Spent very little time between the right, left, right. Really, this is just a check. Does the system create random numbers? And the answer is no, it always goes to zero. So now we're going to do something a little bit more interesting, which is to take a measurement, rotate the system as if it's going to the other side, reference it against the same straight surface, measure the left side, walk back around the car, and measure the right side. And also seeing zero toe so let's walk to the front, go to the right, walk around, a little bit of impact, measure the left, walk around, measure the right, getting zero toe. I'm going to do 10 runs of this. This is a little bit harder because the system actually has to measure through that motion. Notice two things on that one. I am in the 0.1 degree range, so I'm gonna do the rest of this in 0.05. Okay, so that actually rounded down. And I'm gonna do a couple where I just reference the right size of the steel bar after having moved the unit. And after that, I'm gonna to switch to trying the right and left side of the bar. For reference, the kinds of motions I'm doing here are things like this. I'm tapping the right and moving the part back and forth. Left. So fairly abrupt, and that's about what we're getting the 0.05 zone. We'll do something a little bit more interesting in a minute. So I'm seeing numbers here that are pretty tight. Um, certainly, if I can align the car within this level, I'm pretty stoked. Now I'm gonna actually walk the unit around a little bit and let's see what that does. So I'm gonna go restart, tap the right, pick up the unit, walk it back. And I'll keep referencing the right side of the bar because that way, if there's any printing errors or details about how this fillet is interacting with the part um, shouldn't affect anything so let's take a look so i'm just going to take a few steps as if i'm walking around a car not banging into anything or anything like that so again pretty accurate and let's go to the front here starting to get a bit more abrupt with this thing I know this isn't perfect, but we're going to put this on a real car in a minute. I was trying to figure out where some of these errors are coming from that I was seeing. Okay, so that was a little bit more abrupt in terms of movement. It'll be interesting to see if that zeroes out. And I'm intentionally rocking it back and forth a fair bit, which I know is um, something you're not supposed to do according to the instructions. Well, I also caught that one, so. Um, well, let's call that one good for now, and let's start doing something a bit more challenging, um, which I think some of the errors that I see come from inclines, which again, the tool's trying to guide you to, 
to improve on, but let's see what that does. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this, but let's try. So I'm going to tilt it up a little bit in the front. It's actually noticeably outside of the range that's indicated. Let's do a bit of movement. Lay it flat. Also, that is working pretty well. And I'm going to tilt it the other way. Also, there is that up, which is starting to lead to my suspicion. I think all the errors I'm really seeing are related to how these edges line up with my apex wheels. Um, so it'll be interesting to get this back on the car and see what happens there. Let's do a few more. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with how well the gyros are tracking the motion. When I'm doing this egregious stuff like flipping this thing along its diagonal, it really shouldn't be able to handle that. And again, the instructions tell you not to do that kind of stuff. So as long as you're doing things where you kind of walk around with, generally speaking, a flat phone, the toe keeps coming out at zero, which is pretty darn impressive. Just to be clear, I'm not actually, I'm not involved in this project at all. I'm just somebody who likes to try to align a lemons car. So that's my interest in this. And I've been pondering how to do this with more complex systems using optics and things of that nature. But if uh, this works, that would be pretty sweet. So I'm pretty convinced that if you can get the right interface and not flip the phone around its axis, you can actually get a pretty good result. So let's try this on the car and see if that's where these issues are coming from that I've seen. All right, let's try this out. We're gonna use this one wheel and pretend like it is all four wheels. And um, I think what we're gonna see is that this is the biggest source of the angle error that we were getting at from tire line. Let's do a restart. And I'm just trying to lift off as little as I can and get the next measurement. Um, right now, I'm really trying to focus on getting the right height and getting the tip tilt correct. And we'll see how this changes as steps progress. Okay, that came up pretty well. Starting to get a little bit more sloppy with the height that I'm atta attaching the tool to the wheel head. Just to see if that does anything. The reason I'm looking at this is I saw what I thought were probably on the order of 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, 0 0.3 kind of errors or changes as I was measuring the car over and over again. And I'm just really curious where that's coming from and see if there's a way to get around that. Let's give it a little bit of tilt here.
All right, let's start moving this thing back and forth a little bit. These wheels are not completely flat, so that should start introducing more air. So I'm just going to go to the very tippy... No, I'm not going to do this kind of stuff, but try to stay on the spokes where possible on this center ring, but kind of back and forth as far as I can. Um, and then maybe also do a little bit more of the side-to-side -side action. So... Okay, that's interesting. So that was a right measurement here, left measurement here, right measurement here. Let's repeat that a few times, maybe without even moving the system that much. So we'll do this for the back here. So shifted back, shifted forward, and you can tell that there's a bit of a rotation when, when that happens. So that's definitely, so just going from here to here is a sizable there, not slipping off the edge here, but from here to here to here. All right, I'm going to keep doing a few more of these. That last one was kind of eye-opening. The fact that sliding the um, system up and down on the wheel caused that much air is pretty remarkable. So I think the kinds of problems I'm seeing really have to do with how the gyro line interacts with the particular wheel. I know in the videos that gyro line posts, there's a lot of um, a lot of wheels that have very nice um, flat lips, and I'm wondering if during the development that was um, what made, I guess, made the results as good as they are. Um, for these apex wheels, it's definitely going to be a bit challenging to get into a state that repeats well. Let's try this again a couple times. So what I'm trying to do here is really just slide the whole unit up and down, almost with the same um, kind of lip overlap on the front, but I'm moving to different locations on the spoke back here. So let's try that, try to even this thing out. Just slide it up a little bit. Slide it back down. Let's just do the same thing, except slide up a little bit more. Slide back down. So I think that's really the catch. You gotta really pay attention to how you interface with the wheels. It's good to know. Just to complete the thought, um, I was curious what is 0.2 degrees in terms of an error in this little gap. Well, it's about 0.6 millimeters or 23 milli inch, I guess, um, which is one of these pieces of cardboard is 400 microns, so 0.4 millimeters. So we're talking small numbers. Uh, yeah, it's going to be hard to get these mounted to very curved wheels in a way that repeats, but it's not a problem that gyro line creates, it's a problem of the wheel. So we got to think of something to create a nice repeatable engine.